Okay, our next piece is another reliquary figure. And that is a really important uh, art vocabulary term you already should know. The last time we talked about a reliquary figure was at the Church of St. Foy with the reliquary figure that uh, we studied in, well, you guys did in December. Uh, so the reliquary figures, as you remember, is supposed to be uh, containers for, um, you know, anything from pieces of hair or body parts or anything that um, would connect people to uh, whoever they were praying to. And that very definitely in regards to who they were praying to between the Africans and the Christians, but um, the function remains largely the same. So the reliquary figure exists both in European and African societies, uh, which I think is pretty cool. So this reliquary figure is from the Bayeri people. I'm sorry, that the reliquary figure is called Bayeri and it's from the Fang peoples. And they are in from southern Cameroon, dates from 19th to the to early 20th century. Uh, it's made out of wood and uh, this one's in the Brooklyn Museum. Um, and then I've got another example here on the next slide of a reliquary figure that is in the Metropolitan Museum in New York City. And um, I just wanted to kind of show you the, um, you know, the, they're different. This one's actually a female reliquary figure, um, even though we see heavily muscled arms and uh, we see heavily muscled legs, you know, wide feet, but the breasts here are obviously going to distinguish it from the one that is on the list for our course of study. So uh, just some background, the Fong people live near the Atlantic coast from southern Cameroon through Rio Muni and into Gabon and they believe that skulls, bones, and relics of ancestors who have performed great deeds during their lifetimes were collected after burial and then placed in a cylindrical bark container. That Bark container was called the uh, Nisek Bayeri. It's N S E K hyphen B I E R I. And that was preserved by the family. And then deeds honored during a lifetime included anything from victory and warfare. They also celebrated killing an elephant, which is horrendous to me, but it's a different culture. Um, and the Fong began to first trade with the Europeans, and they um, that would be something that would be considered uh, something to celebrate, or having a large amount of children. Another one could be founding a particular lineage or community. So the bones and relics of the deceased family members were thought to have had special power that could be drawn upon to aid living with problems that confronted or threatened the family. And again, that's one of the things that uh, the people who are going on pilgrimages in Europe were focusing on when they were making their pilgrimages. So before colonial officials, meaning uh, the Europeans who banned many of these ritual practices, uh, ancestral spirits represented by the reliquaries were regularly consulted on problems with so things such as fertility or, um, you know, needing to be successful with hunting and farming. It was also used as a point of focus for meditation uh, that would help connect the ancestors and the living. The Feng placed a wooden sculpture called an Ima Bayeri on top of the container holding the relics. So the statue that we're seeing in the round would have been on top of the box that held the relics. The function of the sculptures were to be points of contact for ancestral support and veneration, but also as guardians to protect the relics from malevolent spirit forces. Bayeri were carved in a number of different forms and styles, as I showed you a different style earlier. Some had large heads and long necks that are secured into the lid of the container, which represents the ancestral body. Other Bayeri were created as full figures with carefully arranged hairstyles 
fully rounded torsos and heavily muscled legs and arms. Now there's been some disagreement. Experts have argued that by area and the fang culture aim to achieve balance between opposing forces of chaos and order, male and female, pure and impure, powerful and weak, but that's not, that hasn't been confirmed. The fang value an attitude of quiet composure, of reflection and tranquility. These qualities are embodied in the symmetry of the Bayeri, which communicates calm, wisdom of the ancestor, while also instilling awe and even fear in those not initiated into the Fong religion. And I've got another short video that I want you guys to watch. So I'm going to click on this and get it started soon. I hope. Okay, there we go. We're here in the Brooklyn Museum looking at a wooden sculpture, a figure that performed an important role. It guarded a reliquary. This figure is almost a talisman in that it was intended to ward off those that might harm the contents of that box or as a warning to others who might come in contact with it and be harmed by it, like uninitiated men and women. So the contents of the box that this figure guarded were sacred and powerful. They were usually the bones of important members of society, important ancestors, along with potent substances like beads that they may have owned and medicine. So who constituted a great man for the Fang people? A very high status, noble person who had lived a long and good life. This would include lineage heads, clan heads, special warriors, even craftsmen who were exceptionally talented, as well as women who had borne lots of healthy children. It's believed that the Fang utilized these reliquary boxes with remains rather than putting them into a more permanent cemetery because they had been nomadic or semi-nomadic. They were probably maintained by elder men in the community who would be in charge of putting them together and consulting them when there was uh, some great decision to be made. The figure has an elongated torso, a large rounded head, eyes that look down, a closed mouth, the arms are clasped together, but there's a sense of very powerful musculature. So there's a balance between a figure that has a sense of calm and contemplativeness and at the same time real power and strength. It's almost as though the figure has this coiled up energy, this vitality that's ready to spring forth if it was needed, but otherwise retains a very calm, dignified appearance. The top of the head is enlarged. For the fang, we see an emphasis on the head, particularly the coiffure, and the tubular nature of the limbs and the body. There's also an emphasis on the herniated belly button, which is, of course, where the umbilical cord first gives life to humans, just as this reliquary is guarding the remains of the deceased who have returned back into the spiritual world, waiting for rebirth. So this particular figure is a male figure, but the Fang also made reliquary guardian figures who were female. These figures also had a second life as puppets during young men's initiations. In other words, they were brought out to educate young men about their ancestors and help young men experience or be in the same place as the essence or the energy of their ancestors, who really were the founding fathers, the lineage heads of their ethnic group. While the face is very typically stylized, the hairstyle was popular when this object was actually made. So we have these three crests and kind of a ducktail in the back, which is what Fang men at the time, high status men, were wearing. When we look at so much African art, we're looking at art that is not naturalistic, and intentionally so. The purpose of the object was to express certain spiritual ideas. And so we see abstraction. We see eyes that are reduced to half circular shapes and the cheeks forming these diagonal lines and a kind of reduction to 
geometric shapes that art historians call abstraction. And we could also note that in the limbs, which are very cylindrical and rounded. The artist could have very easily depicted a naturalistic looking figure, but they chose abstraction. This is a conceptual piece. It's about the idea of a reliquary, the idea of this guardian figure, rather than depicting an actual human or how they look in nature, which was not of interest to this Fang artist. The wonderful tension in this figure is the fact that he is suggesting one approach with honor and respect, with eyes closed and patience. At the same time, he's suggesting his strength to ward off spirits or humans that may want to disrupt the contents of his box. Okay, so that is the Fang Bayeri figure, and um, it uh, is going to come up, I mean, multiple times. Mostly, I can see this being a piece that you would do a comparative essay for uh, the reliquary figure of St. Foy with this reliquary figure. So, um, we will talk about that type of stuff when I return to work. So, uh, one more piece to go and we'll be done.